Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to change gears a little bit. I will admit I am probably the member of this team that does not fit because I am a traditional FCS educator, registered dietitian, um, and I am one of those that looks at bugs and thinks, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Um, my husband happens to be a science teacher, though, when I told him I was doing this, he's like, oh, that's really cool. Can I try it? So yeah, he did. Um, so we're going to focus today on, in this session on the chart that's in your handout packet um, with the red bar at the top. This is kind of where all the information is coming from. So you can kind of follow along there. But I want to start with essentially the disclaimer. Just as Ashley mentioned earlier, there's a lot of room for research in insect nutrition. That was one of my biggest challenges. I can easily find standard nutrition data for traditional meat sources, traditional protein sources, from typically from the USDA um, Agriculture Research Service nutrient database. Trusted source, as a registered dietitian, I go there all the time. Looking for the nutritional qualities and the nutritional breakdown of insects, I could find pretty much every different site I went to had different numbers for the same thing. And that was a challenge. So that is a question that I won't necessarily say that the numbers I have on your handout for the cricket powder, cricket flour, roasted crickets, and mealworms are 100% accurate. But they were pretty much the best I could find. And I went with multiple sources to say, all right, these kind of all line up pretty similar, so we're going to trust this. And as Ashley mentioned earlier, also is the, the food allergy risk. As someone who works in nutrition, food allergies are a big concern um, because the, the side effects or the symptoms of a food allergy can be very damaging. Um, but when you, most of us don't think about the fact that insects and shellfish are related. The exoskeletons, the segmented bodies, both of them contain similar allergens, things people can be allergic to, like chitin, tropomycin, and the arginine kinase. So there are chemicals in both of these that people could be allergic to, which are always our concern. And I've noticed that on even the foods that we purchased for the stuff that I got to make for you today do have, if you're allergic to, al to shellfish, do not consume this. They have warnings right on the labels. So one of the reasons people like pr insects as a food source is because obviously they are high in protein and they are a complete protein. So they contain all nine essential <laughs> amino acids. Whereas a lot of other protein sources that people may be eating, whether it's um, trying to get protein from whole grains, from legumes, they're not always whole protein sources or complete proteins. So that is one benefit of the consumption of insects. <clears throat> and as mentioned earlier, a lot of these current buzzwords, insects can be gluten-free, depending on how they're raised or what they're fed. Insects can be organic. Insects can be paleo-friendly. Insects can be kosher. So depending on if you're following any of these guidelines, you can find varieties that could meet those needs. Whereas if you're trying to look at traditional protein sources, your traditional meat, fish, poultry, we're going to have a little bit more of, an, of a challenge there. So my job really was to take a look at what the nutrition of insects looks like compared to the nutritional qualities of your traditional meat, poultry, fish, eggs, protein foods. So here's where we're going to start. I'm going to go through each of these, and every slide is going to have this kind of comparison, how it compares to traditional protein foods, and when we get to the traditional protein foods, how it compares to insects, to the crickets. Crickets are pretty much my base here. Here's the first thing. You heard several times this morning already that crickets have similar or almost equal protein to meat. Hmm. Depends on what you're looking at. If you are looking at 100, we compared everything as 100 grams, so everything was an equivalent here. 100 grams of raw crickets, then yes, 121 calories, about 13 grams of protein, 5.5 grams of fat. Similar protein to most animal proteins, lower calories, lower fat, but 
You're eating that exoskeleton, so you're getting way more fiber. If you eat a steak, zero fiber. If you eat insects, fiber. That's a bonus. And a lot of, sometimes more protein compared to a lot of animal protein, more B12 compared to a lot of animal proteins. Here's where things get confusing. And every person that I had proofread this PowerPoint said, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense. A lot of times we're looking at the calorie content of roasted crickets. So once you are buying them in, in a packet that looks like this, you know, somehow they are already pre-roasted, shelf stable, ready to go. Then you're looking at 472 calories and someone says, well, why are the calories so much higher? It's an equivalent amount. Think about the water content. Once you take all the water content, roast it down, out of those crickets, you have a whole lot more crickets in 100 grams. So it's a concentrated source now. So now you're looking at that 472 calories, 58 grams of protein. Huge jump in that protein content. 24 grams of fat. So again, relatively high fat content, but it's not a bad, it's not, they're not bad fats. And this really kind of links to what, I want to say Glenn, was that correct? Said about the powdered version. If you think about using this cricket powder, which is what's going to come up next, um, as almost like a protein supplement. I equivalent, equate this very much to, as a nutritionist, when I would tell people, add non-fat dry milk powder to your foods to boost the nutrition, to boost the calories. This is, it's the same concept. I'm adding something else that's going to contain minerals, some vitamins, nutrients, but it's not going to change the flavor a lot. I can add it in small doses as a supplement almost. So cricket powder, essentially 100% roasted ground crickets, 429 calories, 70 grams of protein, because again, we're losing the air that we, and perhaps some of the extra parts um, so more protein than just our straight up roasted crickets and a little bit less fat though. So that was one of the variations I found on cricket powder. And again, multiple places make their own cricket powder. This was just the, the version I took for the nutrition. So when you compare this 100 grams of cricket powder to 100 grams of say ground beef, it's not even a comparison. Everything's higher because I've taken out all that moisture. So we're not really comparing apples to apples in that situation. Mealworms, again, these are roasted. So again, you've, really, you've removed all that moisture, and so you have to consider that the numbers are going to be higher. About 436 calories, 55 grams of protein, 19 grams of fat. Very similar in numbers to those roast whole roasted crickets. Um, and again, typically, because this is a a dehydrated product, we're looking at higher calories, protein, fat, and fiber just because of removing all of that water. Yes, sir? The assumption these are roasted with no oils or anything added? Just Typically, that's what I have understood as I've tried to read how they, you know, what the descriptions are. Roasting as literally just dry roasted, not adding anything else to it. Because um, this packet, it does say roasted crickets, and the ingredients truly say crickets. That's it. There's nothing else in it. <laughs> crickets. <laughs> um, so typically, and the same with the cricket, with the cricket powder, is it is 100% ground crickets. No, no other ingredients. So we're going to switch gears and start looking at our traditional animal protein sources and how do these compare individually to insects, to crickets. And I was trying to compare each of them to raw crickets, so we were looking at the equal moisture content. So if you look at 100 grams of, ra of raw ground beef, I used, um, I think I said an 85-15, so 85% lean, 15% fat ground beef. So somewhere in the middle, not your super fatty, not your super lean. Um, we're looking at 176 calories, 20 grams of protein, and about 10 grams of fat. So comparatively, 100 grams of, of raw ground beef does have slightly higher protein than that gra 100 grams of crickets and more calories. It also has more fat. <laughs> but as I said earlier, it's going to have less fiber, less B12, and then you've got some other minerals that tend to be a little bit better overall than your, your ground meat does. If you compare it to all-purpose flour, 
Now this one, you need to look at your chart here. <clears throat> Because column two says AP cricket flower, which is all-purpose cricket flower. And then about five rows in is AP flower. So that's what we're comparing here. Because one of the things that I used in the recipe that I, one of the recipes I made for today was a cricket baking flour. And I'll caution on this later, but this is a wheat flour. This one specifically is wheat flour, barley flour, and cricket powder. And so you get the baking benefits of flour with the added protein of crickets. Um, so if I'm comparing the cricket flour to a straight all-purpose flour, um, about equivalent in calories, but all-purpose flour has less protein, less fat, and less fiber. So if you consider the less fat, that seems a little bit odd, but we know that the cricket powder does contain fat, so we're adding fat when we add that. But the cricket powder is also going to bump up our fiber content and bump up our protein content. If we compare this to fresh salmon, fresh salmon has um, more calories than the raw crickets, more protein again, more fat, and less fiber and B12. So similar overall. And this, com this continued for the most part through most of our, our traditional meat sources, with the exception of chicken, chicken actually had slightly less calories per 100 grams. And I think this was a, fry, a raw fryer chicken. That's what I was comparing here. So whole chicken in general. Slightly less, slightly less calories, but more protein. But the chicken also had a little bit less fat, fiber, and B12 than the, the crickets in general. So similar to what Ashley mentioned earlier with the chicken eating similar feed levels to the crickets, the chicken actually compares pretty well, pretty comparably to, to our raw crickets. But then I tried to move into some of the non-raw animal meat proteins. Um, Whole eggs have higher calories than the raw crickets. Equivalent protein, 13 grams to, I think we have 13 grams on the other one too. Um, but the whole eggs do have more fat. And again, they would obviously have less fiber and B12. So depending on what your sources of protein are, this is not a bad option to, you know, as I was doing more of this, I'm like, wow, okay, I can, I'm still gonna have a little bit of the ooh factor on the insects, but I'm getting it. I'm understanding more why this is a benefit. Um, comparing it to almonds, so a non-animal source, this would be, you know, something that maybe someone who was vegan would be considering um, using as an animal as a protein source. Look at these numbers: 100 grams of raw raw almonds, 579 calories, <coughs> huge, but only 21 grams of protein. So he, when we're looking at alternative protein sources from the traditional meat, poultry, fish, you're getting a lot more calories for not as much bang for your buck in protein and way more fat. So if you compare this to the 100 grams of raw crickets, obviously the calories, protein, and fat are higher. And the protein is you consider is higher because with the 100 grams of raw almonds, you have no moisture content here. It's very low moisture. So this would be similar even if I tried to compare it to the roasted crickets. The numbers would still be, the calories are way higher than the roasted crickets also. But with the almonds, you are getting fiber, so you're getting that nutrient that you're not getting with your traditional meat sources. Um, but you are getting less B12. So again, there's always that trade-off. With anything in nutrition, you're trying to make that balance between where do I get my calories from? How do I, what's my fat con content going to be? Am I choosing to use, this is my protein source, and if I use this, I, am I going to have to adjust somewhere else to get because of my fat content? Nutrition is always going to be those balancing acts between each individual nutrient. And so it is interesting to look at the insect perspective and think, well, okay, if I, if I eat the insects and it's t relatively low in calories, and it's high in protein, and I'm going to get some extra vitamins and minerals here and there. How does that balance out with the rest of my diet then? I would be really interested to know overall with 
if insect consumption were to increase, would that mean that we would, as a country, finally start to meet our daily fiber needs? Because most of us don't get anywhere near the fiber that we need to have. And if we could get fiber from insect exoskeletons, that would be a possibility. Now, I threw this one in here just to kind of put a little bit of twist, because I said earlier that I, think, I thought that traditional cricket powder was very similar to a protein supplement. And if you compare a whey protein powder, and I had to just pick one. I couldn't find a nutrient value for just a generic whey protein powder. I, everyone was, in, every brand is different. So I picked one. Um, in general, we're looking at about 350 calories, about 58 grams of protein, and one gram of fat. This is specifically protein powder. So they've taken out the fat, and it's, it is almost all protein. So if you compare it to raw crickets, obviously you've got way more calories, it's got much higher protein, lower fat. If you compare it to the cricket powder though, 100% cricket powder, your calorie content is still lower in this whey protein powder. And, but your protein content is very similar because cr cricket powder is the very first column on your handout. So 58 grams of protein in this protein powder versus 70 grams in the cricket powder that I use as, as the example. And then we get to the fat. Obviously your crickets have much more fat compared to this because they've removed the fat in this, in this protein powder. In this protein powder though, what they've done is they've bumped up some of the additional, um, they bumped up the potassium, it's got way more sodium than your, tradition, than your crickets do. So you're seeing some differences there. This has zero fiber in it. If I was eating cricket powder, I would be getting fiber. So there, there's always those trades with how you're going to make some decisions. Um, overall, looking at this chart, it was really interesting to kind of see where things played out. Um, and after listening to Jeff's presentation about you know, eating, looking at consumption of fresh roasted crickets, I would be always intrigued about, you know, I'm looking at the calorie content of 100 grams of raw crickets. Well, who's going to eat raw crickets? So how do we put this into a perspective of what someone's truly going to consume? And is the 100 grams of whole roasted crickets, which is what I'm assuming is more like this concept, which are very, very dry, crunchy crickets, how does that compare to the roasted chapulines that Jeff was talking about? Are they a very different product? Are they still, are they still really crunchy or are they softer? What's, what's the comparison there? Um, I will say also that we were work I was working with crickets and mealworms because from the companies that we could find online to buy the products from, those are pretty much my options. Um, so there, as mentioned earlier, you can eat all kinds of different insects, but again, I couldn't find nutrition data for all of those. And even in the FAO report that you have, the whole section on nutrition, nowhere does it have, here's the nutrition profile of this insect. It will say, here's how the potassium content is, balances out over a variety of different insects. Here's how this such and such caterpillar breaks down. But nowhere were you able to find an entire nutrient profile on each individual insect. And that's a challenge right now. So just to put things into bar graphs, because some people like pictures, so you can see it all in one place. If you look at the protein content, again, per 100 grams, You'll see, obviously, that the cricket powder and the roasted crickets and the mealworms pop way up because of the dehydration factor. And then the whey protein powder on the end. <coughs> Otherwise, the cricket flour, raw crickets are all very, they're similar to our traditional meat sources. So it's not really a loss. It's a pretty easy comparison there. If you were to Look at fat content, though, again, as I mentioned earlier, the almonds just shoot sky high because obviously we know that nuts have a, a high fat percentage. And the cricket powder and roasted crickets and the mealworms pop up because we've taken all the water out, so your fat is concentrated there. But you look at the other fat on your traditional meat products, you know, ground beef, eggs, salmon, chicken, and they're all higher. 
So we know that we're getting, you know, that there is a higher fat content in those traditional meat sources than even in the raw crickets. So we definitely could see a um, comparison there of saving calories, decreasing fat consumption to some extent if we were looking from the raw cricket perspective. Cholesterol is not one that I pulled out on the earlier slides and I wanted to throw this out there because it seems odd. We're like, where are we getting cholesterol from? But there is a cholesterol content in your cricket powder, roasted crickets. I could not find a number for raw crickets. Um, again, when you take the water out, you're concentrating that cholesterol. But co if you compare it to your beef, beef, salmon, chicken, it looks like our insects have much higher, higher cholesterol content. I would say if I was comparing it to raw crickets, it would probably be equivalent. But the egg, you know, put that one in there just so you can see when you compare things to the, the cholesterol content of an egg, you're nowhere near. So. And, and eggs are typically what, we can, what we're concerned about when we're looking at cholesterol. Fiber, again, just throwing that out there. We're going to get a lot more fiber from our insect friends than from any of our traditional meat, meat, chicken, poultry, fish um, protein sources. And obviously almonds are much higher because we just know that nuts are going to have a high, a high fiber content. So comparatively, there are definite benefits to the insect consumption. There's a few, well, it's about equivalent to what our traditional meat sources are. And here's the one that vitamin B12 is way higher. And if you consider that as people age, their B12 absorption rate slows down. And a lot of us don't get enough B12 anyway, especially if we're trying to cut down on our our um, traditional meat sources, animal protein sources, that would be the source of B12, a lot of us aren't getting enough B12 in our diets anyway. So this could be, again, from a supplementary factor that you could bump up that vitamin with, with adding roasted crickets to, to some dishes. Now, I will freely admit that I snagged these next two slides from someone else. But I liked the way they demonstrated. Um, they could do the graphics way better than I can. So obviously, we kind of summarized already the average protein per 100 grams. So the end would be your roasted crickets, fish, beef, and chicken, all pretty similar. And then it's that comparison at the bottom, though. If I'm looking at that beef steer, I have about 50-50 protein fat. If I'm comparing it to a cricket, I have way more protein and I'm getting fiber there. So from a nutritional standpoint, it is a more complete picture. And then, as someone who has done my homework in um, hospitality management and edible portion of, you know, what am I going to get out of this? How much of it can I eat? Let's be realistic. That beef steer that's going to sell at my county fair for an unbelievable amount of money, only about 40% of that's going to actually go home. 60% of it's going to end up somewhere else with, you know, fat, organs, carcass, you know, skin, everything. So not a very high percent yield there. And you go all the way over then to crickets, grasshoppers, and you're looking at about an 80% edible portion or, or, or yield. So if I can take 20% loss compared to 60% loss, that's a pretty good question from a perspective of someone who would be in a food production world. Now, from the nutrition standpoint, as I mentioned earlier, I got to make some things for you today. So in the, the taste test you're going to have coming up next, um, we, I was in my home kitchen and got to, got to experiment. It was interesting. Um, so the first is this caution. Not all cricket powders created equal. There are a variety of places I've, I've been able to check out online. And some places say cricket powder, some say cricket flour. There's a variety here. And everything listed down here, this first one, the black one says 100%, 100% uh, 
100% pure cricket powder. The next one is all-purpose baking flour, but it's from Biddy, so we know that there's crickets in it. Um, then there's the cricket protein powder and the cricket baking flour, baking flour, which is what I have here. So cricket powder and cricket flour are not necessarily the same thing. There are some companies I found that called their their, their product cricket flour, and when I looked at the ingredients, it was 100% crickets. That is cricket powder in my mind. 100% crickets. So read the ingredient label so you know exactly what's in it. Because if you're using it for a baking product, you are going to want to have a blend of your cricket powder and other starches so that you will get the benefits of traditional starches in your baking. So the, the Bitty baking flour is cassava and something else. This one I said was wheat and barley flour. And so if you were try to replace your traditional all-purpose flour in a recipe with 100% cricket, cricket powder, it will not work. But if you replace it with a cricket baking powder, which is similar to an all-purpose flour, but with the cricket protein added to it, that will work out. Yes, sir. Is there a rule of stuff like if you have your own powder and you want to add it to your own flour, what ratio? I would not say there is a rule of thumb from a nutrition or someone who's done a fair bit of baking perspective. I probably wouldn't add more than a quarter. I wouldn't even go that high. All right, yeah. <laughs> when you're baking, you, you really want that structure of the starch, so I would, I would worry about that. Now, if you were going to use it in some of the recipes I found were things like uh, chicken cutlets that are breaded. and they're, So they're using a combination of maybe an all-purpose flour and the cricket powder in the breading. That's totally up to you with that percentage is. But if you want the, the actual structure for your baking to rise, you're going to need a fair bit of traditional, traditional flour. Um, I will say, cooking with the Cricut all-purpose flour, um, the thing I noticed about it was it's definitely a little bit more fragrant. That's just a nice way to say it. Um, Bugalicious. I actually would equivalent, it, it, I think it's pretty similar to a real strong whole wheat flour. You know, when you cook with whole wheat flour, you definitely are getting a little bit more of a strongly scented pro product. And this, that's kind of where I would go with this. It wasn't off-putting, but it was definitely like, okay, this is not just straight all-purpose flour <laughs> refined. There's, there's something going on here. Um, but overall, it's a little bit darker color, so the muffins turned out a little bit darker than I would have expected them. But really... No major issues with cooking with the, the, the cricket flour. I will say when you're looking at some of the recipes, I'll be, you know, if you want to look through some of the cookbooks that Ashley has, think about are they recipes that are using more of that dare factor, like, oh, you ate something that has crickets in it or bugs in it, and the recipe has maybe one teaspoon of cricket powder in it. That is just a throwaway so they can put the word cricket in the name of the recipe. The muffins that we made today actually had two cups of the, the cricket flour in it. So, well, I don't know how much cricket powder was in that, it made me feel a little bit better that it wasn't just a throwaway amount of, of cricket. Additionally, um, the recipes that I got to make for you today, do you want me to hand, pass these out to now or later? After the taste testing? Okay. Um, so I made the cricket flour muffins today, uh, cinnamon cricket muffins, so they made you little mini muffins, and <coughs> cranberry cricket bark. So if anyone has a nut allergy, do not eat that. It does have pecans in it. Um, I was also asked, and do you want the nutrition comparison? Let's do it later. Later, yeah. after the taste testing. Yeah. Okay. So I was asked to compare your cricket samples this after from, for our next session to some traditional grocery store foods. Um, and 
interesting again. Really not, not too far off. So, um, although I will say the Chirps chips, I had a hard time finding a, an equivalent because the Chirps chips have chia seeds in them, which bump the protein content up additionally. So it wasn't comp comparable to a traditional cracker or chip. So what kind of questions do you have? And if you're interested, those are all cricket recipes down there. Any questions? So looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what is the nutrient content and could that um, version, could our crickets become more of a supplement option? And I think that is an option. Now, do I think it would be equivalent to like a Metamucil? Maybe. But if you looked at that cricket powder as more of a nutritional supplement as opposed to let's eat whole crickets, Again, I think you've gotten past it's that debugifying that you mentioned earlier. And even for me, I'm like, okay, I can handle the cricket powder. I'm still a little iffy on the whole, whole insects. Um, so I think that could become very, much more acceptable. And if you look at adding it as a supplement and something to boost the nutrition quality compared to a whole insect food. No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.